This county boasts in a calmer charm and a slower pace. What started out as a low-key day trip with my kids turned into simply one of my favorite days. A natural playscape, swinging bridge, the Mississippi River, and history galore await. Join us as we share our top places to visit in Louisa County, Iowa. Are you dreaming of an adventure with your family, but the hurdles of planning a trip stand in your way? Let us take the guesswork out of it for you. From where to go and where to park, to what to expect and what to pack, we have you covered. Let us help you experience an outdoor adventure made easy. Louisa County is tucked away along the Mississippi River in Southeast Iowa. This county beams with natural areas and unique history. These locations are not ranked in any particular order, but are listed in the order in which we visited them. You may need to start at a different part of the loop than us. We were coming from the west, so we started with Eden Park. All park addresses are in the description of this video. Stop 1. Eden Park. This county park was a perfect little pit stop, only a few minutes north of Highway 92. The kids loved playing on the playscape, which had a turtle to sit on, log to climb through, spiderweb to climb, and a collection of rocks and climbing ropes. After playing, we hit the trail for a short hike through the prairie. Eden Park is 146 acres, which has prairie, wetlands, two creeks, and timber. We barely scratched the surface of this park. Eden Park can be found off Highway 92 by turning north on X-17. Eden Park is on the right side of the road. Stop 2. The Swinging Bridge in Columbus Junction. What I thought would be a quick pit stop turned into a fun adventure. The first bridge was built in 1886 to help residents on the west side of the ravine have a more direct access to town. After three different bridges were constructed, the current bridge was built in 1922. This 262 foot bridge takes you 100 feet above the ravine. This bridge is sometimes referred to as the Lover's Leap Bridge from a local legend that a Native American maiden jumped to her death after finding out her lover was killed in battle. We were surprised at how much this bridge is nestled into the residential area. Although once you begin crossing it, it has more of a remote feel. After crossing from the east to the west side of the bridge, we discovered a small shelter, water fountain, picnic tables, fire pit, and the Possum Trailhead. At first, we were a little unsure about the trail since it took us in the opposite direction of the bridge. However, it winds around the ridge to the bottom of the ravine. This was the perfect little hike. It has a storybook signage along the way and a little log book at the bottom where you can write your name. You definitely get your steps in as you wind down and back up the ravine. After completing the Possum Trail, there is a white pavilion just off Highway 92 where you can take a break if you need. The Swinging Bridge can be found just off Highway 92 or Oak Street. Stop 3. Mallory Cemetery. This was a stop I almost went right past. I thought it might be uninteresting or too complex for my kids to understand. It turned out to be one of their favorite stops. This cemetery is fascinating. So fascinating that we actually created a scavenger hunt for you to use when you stop there. The kids enjoyed looking at several different things, such as the old headstones, the homemade cement headstone, the different markers for veterans, and which different wars are represented in the cemetery. The different symbols, including the Bible, a hand pointing up, the lamb, the rose, and the willow tree. We discovered that instead of allowing our kids to be frightened by a cemetery, we wanted them to have a positive and educational lesson while they were there. Malroy Cemetery can be found off Highway 99 on your way from Wapolo to Toolsboro at the top of the hill on the right side of the highway. Stop 4. The Toolsboro Mounds and Museum. 
Just down the road from the cemetery, our next stop was a two-in-one special. Toolsboro Mound and Museum is right next to the Littleton Brothers Memorial. The Hopewellian Mounds at Toolsboro are among the best preserved and accessible remnants of an ancient culture which flourished from around 200 BC to 300 AD. This was a significant site with as many as nine mounds believed to have once existed along this bluff top which overlooks the Mississippi River and the mouth of the Iowa River. Unfortunately, the mound to the right was excavated in the late 1800s. However, the mound to the left is believed to have been undisturbed by man since the last burial. This site includes two mounds, a museum, and a prairie demonstration plot. The museum is open seasonally, but the grounds are open to visitors year-round. Be sure to stop at the adjacent Littleton Brothers Memorial. Six brothers from Loiza County went to the Civil War and made the ultimate sacrifice. Erected in 2016, this 11-foot-tall granite monument is beautiful. It honors what is believed to be the largest known loss of life from an immediate family in the history of all United States wars. The museum and memorial can be found just off Highway 99. Stop 5. The Toolsboro Boat Ramp. From the museum parking lot, hop back onto Highway 99 going east. Turn left on the Gravel Prairie Street, which you will continue on for about two miles before arriving at the boat ramp. We just played along the shore of the Mississippi River and were lucky enough to watch a barge pass by. We found fossils, mussel shells, and played in the sand. We made sure we were courteous of the fishermen and women using the ramp. The water levels were also lower, which made it more fun to explore. A little bit of history. If you look up river, you will see the former location of Burris City. Plotted in 1855, Nathan Burris thought the mouth of the Iowa and the Mississippi River combined with the proposed airline railroad, which was planned to link Philadelphia to San Francisco, would be the perfect location for a town. And it was for a while. At one point, the population was nearly 1,000 people, which was bigger in size than Chicago at the time. It had five stores, a large warehouse, general stores, drug stores, a printing office, furniture store, and the beautiful Ellsworth Hotel. In the spring of 1858, both the Iowa and Mississippi rivers flooded at the same time, causing six to eight feet of water to race through the town. Of the determined few that stayed in the town to rebuild, a lack of clean water resulted in a cholera outbreak and mosquitoes carrying yellow fever. It is said that during the night, those still living in Burris would bring the dead from Burris up the hill to the Malroy Cemetery and bury them in unmarked graves. Burris City transitioned into a point of river commerce over the next few years. During the Civil War, Confederate prisoners of war were taken up the Mississippi River to the Rock Island Prison Camp. If any did not survive the trip, they were dropped off at the former Burris City and taken up to the Malroy Cemetery, where they were also buried in unmarked graves. There is now a marker in the Malroy Cemetery to recognize the lives represented there. Although this is a sad story, the history linking the Toolsboro boat ramp and the Malroy Cemetery is quite interesting, to say the least. Stop 6. Fort Loiza. Fort Loiza is a 24,000-acre refuge for migratory birds and other wildlife. The visitor center was closed when we arrived, but we hiked to the overlook to admire the view of the backwaters of the Mississippi River. From the overlook, we hiked to the right and down to the floodplain. We found all sorts of fun things, from a large sycamore tree that we had to climb into, a raccoon skull, locust pods, Burr oak acorns, large sycamore leaves, Kentucky coffee tree pods, and more. We just did a little loop before taking our first left back up the hill to the overlook. The sun was starting to set on us as well. This was a short little hike, but we definitely got our steps in. The Port Louisa headquarters is located just off X61. Stop 7. 
the Langwood Interpretive Trail, and the Langwood Education Center. We were able to stop at the Langwood Interpretive Trail and hike the Wetland Loop. We enjoyed reading the interpretive panels and running up on the hills. We were all wearing down a bit, but I imagine this would be a fun place to explore the wetlands and pond with a net. We were able to stop at the neighboring Langwood Education Center as well for a program put on by Loiza County Conservation staff, as this area is only open during select times or through a reservation. This is one of the few places where you can rent the entire area, pond, canoes, lodge, A-frame, amphitheater, and all. We enjoyed hiking around the area near the pond and found signs of beaver, a balance beam, and our favorite, a cave tree. Langwood can be found just outside of Grandview. From X61, you can take a left on H Avenue. Three of these stops are part of the Great River Road, which includes the Toolsboro Mounds and Museum, Port Loiza, and the Langwood Interpretive Trail. What to pack? For all of these locations, I would suggest wearing sturdy hiking shoes. We explored these areas on a cool fall day, but in the summer months, I would pack a first aid kit, water, snacks, and who can forget sunscreen and bug spray. These short stops strung together like a dazzling necklace of adventures. I hope you can make the Loiza County Loop one of your next trips. Looking for other adventures around the Midwest? Be sure to follow us at Outdoor Adventures Made Easy on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram.